Visual artists cannot do a portrait. 40 years ago, 40 years ago, there are thousands of people who could do a portrait. Eh? In oil or watercolor or sculpture or whatever. So, and, so you can have borrowed because Picasso did paper and, and many, many artists give example. Michelangelo, Michelangelo had many people to work, but Michelangelo knew how to paint and sculpt so he had. So the Konarak guru and the, uh, the sculptor had 500 or 10,000 sculptors to do. But you see what Mayabati has taken 10,000 sculptors from Rajasthan and Orissa to do a wall of this size and her own replicas. Then we should do a, not a single person, we are timid, shameless people in our country. Nobody has done a PIN against her or anybody who's putting up a statue of himself or herself during the lifetime in public in, in the visual pollution. <laughs> Gandhi and Gandhi and Nehru, etc., like pygmies uh, and like little rats, sculptures which are going on. There is a, there is a, there is a what you call um, Arbor Art Commission in Delhi. I have been an advisor once in a year or something, they call you. So the big architect, the chairman said, oh, This is a sculpture, it has been done, what shall we do about it? I said, Arbor Art Commission should have formulated the corridors. When you have a sculpture in the public place, what should be the size? You, these have been worked out all over the world, in our country. When you put a large sculpture in a Konarak temple of 15 feet, what is the perspective, the sight line, which is known. So, till today, our Barat Commission has to decide and it should be the size of pedestal, it's two, two, two human size or two and a half human size, etc. Now, when you talk the Greek sculpture or the figuration, it's seven and a half heads. Seven and a half heads. In our country, Ganesha is five heads, Vishnu is eleven heads. There are different paradigms. And these are not taught. Now, this is our friend, uh, Papa. Uh, great historian from JNU. Uh, uh, Papa. Uh, hey. The great historian, uh, who was the vice chancellor of, uh, yeah, and he was the head of the history department. So I, Sabya Sachi. So I said, Sabya Sachi, why don't you write a book, Cultural History of India for School Children? He comes after a month, Dati, you're given a big task, I'm going, Azad, Mom, I don't know how to write this. They both taught history, because the British history was economic and political history. Till today, we don't have a book for children, uh, a cultural history of India. We can learn, we can learn, we can learn, we can learn, we can the sanskar has not been written till today. So all these art and aesthetics in JNU, you have big exhibition in New York or something, you know, all these dancers, in summer they are not here in Delhi. <laughs> they all go and dance everywhere and big money big thing. There was a Uriya the dancer who used to speak to me, Uriya now she speaks an American accent. <laughs> no, no, no. You are saying. Now if if you were a great dancer, somebody in New York said you are fantastic. Don't you think you are laughing within yourself? What the bloody thing? Yeah. And if Kumar Gandhav is singing in so I want to be parochial. I want, if your child is in a village, to know the village first, the painter, the sculptor, the blacksmith there, the parents and the yeah, etc. We are, you know, this globalization, people have dropped their surnames. Surnames. They are embarrassed with they will not get anything if you are a sudra or this or that or whatever, God knows. So everybody, whatever, you drop. So this country, this great country, you see, if you go to Orcha, a beautiful lime plaster dried uh, on which a wet plaster of uh, terra red coating is done. While it's half dried, you engrave on it the white showing through. And you discuss about a possibility of any kind of mural, any kind of low relief, high relief thing or architecture. Do you know the subject was art and architecture? There was nothing like art separate. No, everybody who is commissioning us murals or painting, putting up, they are token art. You know, they are, they are embellishments. There cannot be any architecture design without the art in it in every sphere, anywhere in the world. 
in any period of history. So, you know, this architect, I told Mr. Joseph Stein, who was a great architect, who's, who's uh, I see is one of the best people. So I said, Joseph, my, you are fantastic, but you have no bloody sense of art. I said, you've not, there are 150 artists who are members. They do not have a single work of theirs. As he said, I thought he's having a big show. I thought he was a very close friend of mine. In Bombay, although they were much older, Suza, Gaitan, Devosen, etc., they were 20 years older than me. But I, uh, we had a Bulabai Institute in Bombay, in one room, it doesn't exist anymore. And Gaitan and I had studios there. Right? And everybody talks about, people have written books on what he called progressive group. Shall I tell you? Suza, who's the initiator of this, told me there was no bloody nothing as progressive group. He would give a slap to his professor, he was thrown out, <laughs> and there was a writer progressive group. He took this from uh, Anand Bulga, Anand and all that. They made this, but, and everybody in Calcutta, Bombay, Delhi, Lahore, there used to be little groups put five rupees together to hold an exhibition somewhere in somebody's garage or somebody's house. So they did not even hold an exhibition. When you show that, I told me that she wants to go. Sorry, I shouldn't name anybody, but you know, said one to. So I telephoned Suza. So Suza said, Is she from Bombay? Is she of our period? But she was right. But you show that I did a book on. So everybody, the galleries and artists, everybody is talking about collectors of progressive group. That is what it was. Gare and all these people are there. Some people are not there. They have also jumped into the back. Right. The point is. This is a country where a dancer knew painting, knew cooking, and singing, and so on. One thing fantastic about the visual artists, even of today, they go to dance, and music, and photography, and listen to music, etc., etc. Not the other way. The dancer and musician, etc., have no obvious idea of what is painting, etc. In general. No, no, no. Please don't take it away, sir. No, no, no. I'm saying we went together. I mean, um, do you know Leela Samson of Madhuri's very performance, Sonal's first performance in Bombay? Yeah, I mean, his first one. I have done thousands of sketches of them. I've got black and white photographs, at least 10,000 of these dancers. Black and white. You know what I mean? Those, what I'm saying, there was a camaraderie. There was give and take. We learned from each other, you know, and, and with, with, with humility. Today, the artist goes like this, you know, <laughs> with a big banner on it. So, where is the artist when you say, I really, this country has produced so much, and believe me, not out of false humility, I'm saying, I haven't started. If when I was 40s and 50s and 60s, and I'm 72, I'm saying, I'm starting to paint again. And I used to say, I swear on God, I'm a painter who become an artist. And today, 20 year old says, I'm an artist. You know, to be an artist is a very big word. Vinkarda was an artist. Ram Vinkarda. So as I was telling you, I missed out on that. This young lady said uh, about uh, uh, Daniel. So I said, do you know Ram Vinkarda? She said, what? It's a tongue twister. I said, but he never had a show. One of the greatest artists of the century. Likewise, say for the K.J. Subramanya, Mani, also a, a, an artist of that nature. So we were, so that I can do architecture, I can do toys, I can do weaving, I can do sculpture, I can do painting, I can do podcast, <coughs> then I'm an artist. So when you say you're a dancer or something, or an esthete, you know, Evgenosia or Erosika, where is it? If you use uh, uh, Kalatma both to any of these art and aesthetics in JNU, they don't know the world. And you say, uh, old fashioned, eh? Today, all the artists of the past had interest in sketching and drawing and looking at a temple eh? and going and seeing down. Today, the modern artists are not interested of Indian art. You know? And the kya kya Abhi sab ho jayega. The ikat fabric of Orissa, the pandu is to be beautiful. And the bloody government has brought some uh, Banaras designers, the cut design, itna bada bada jase, uh, 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 bed covers. They are now on the pandu of that. You know? Yes. So, when, this is very alarming, when within 5-10 years, all the old masters will die, their children are doing IT or whatever. So, dancer, craftsmen, weavers, blacksmith, leather <laughs> worker, jewelry, they will all disappear. And 90% are stolen and gone, 
uh, I knew a French uh, diplomat who carried 10 trunks of silver jewelry from here. Eh? And gone, some we are sold, pilfered, and then we have no interest. And whatever is scholarship is done, after what's the name? Archana, the uh, North East Meta. Uske baad, no scholars have done any work in free. It's all from internet and all that. So, forgive me for my rambling, but the situation is very grave. And all these internet working thing, one girl comes to me, says, you have a 35 exhibition. I said, oh, I've had 68. How do you know? Since you know so much, because it was wrongly fed to the internet. Yeah. Uh, another request is whenever you all do program, please don't read our resume. D d d uh, distribute it, keep it outside. It, every lecture in the country, it eats into the thing. We have a sub-commission of UNESCO for Ministry of Culture. First the minister speaks, then the secretary of culture speaks, and then on the resume, then we have two hours for interaction, and they invite people from all over the country. So my request is, Let's go into the depths of this country. They're nothing like old in art. They're nothing like folk, tribal, classical, contemporary. All these bloody divisions have been made, like craftsmen, artisans. But done. You see, let me just end you end with one little thing. Uh, Rajiv City once in Koramput in southern Orissa did a thing. Took about 25, 30 artists there, about 25 years ago. And since I'm from Orissa, I speak Korea. And these were drawings were given to all these master craftsmen to replicate with that style. Now we have the Arabians. So one lady saying, Jatin Babu, this drawing is very bad, I don't want to replicate. A modern artist drawing. So much So And the other there was a golden eye. There's a during Kukul Jaika's time. 10, 15 great designers from all over the world came. Red carpet was laid on. Eh? And they told the craftspeople to do what? Then they said, this is our patent and send it back to us. Thank you very much for the modern art and installation and all this uh, and getting the mickey out of us and making a bloody fool of us. Tell me, if you are a dancer or a musician, you have tal left, Sruti? No, I can't paint that. Can, can a motor mechanic at 20 years old be, uh, uh, do your car repair? Can an uh, MBBS doctor do your surgery of your mother? Dana? So I'm going to pay that to it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, only going to say that it is very serious. And I request all of you to please bear in mind that our pendulum dialogues will definitely try to look at the alarming state of culture that exists today and where we are going. And before I ask Shakti, who's been patiently waiting to share uh, his views with you, I want to just uh, add to Jatin's uh, wonderful quote and quote ramblings. Thank you. About uh, an interview I did just two, three days ago with um, Lakshmi Narayan Garg. Lakshmi Narayan Garg is 84, and he has just done a book on this fact, on music, uh, which is perhaps the 150th such Granth. He lives in Hathras, and he's Kaka Hathras's son. And I just, it was a wonderful two hours that I spent with him, but I want to just share with you one observation that I asked him, which had been in my mind, that <coughs> how do you interpret such stars? And he said, all the five tattvas, what we see, what we touch, what we feel, what we sense, all the five tattvas are registered in our mind 100% all the time. I say something like the template of a computer. He said yes, because he understood that. And he said it's irreversible, it is immutable. And like a tailor who is making a coat, and he has finished one sleeve, and he's finished the front and the back, but he hasn't finished the last sleeve. When you, we believe that when you leave this earth, and in your next dilemma, 
You don't stitch the whole suit again, the coat again. You just stitch the arm. So with sanskaras. Where I link it with art is my own belief for a very long time that Indian painting and sculpture started at the turn of the 19th, uh, 20th century with, of course, the great influence of the Western art on them. And at that time, it was the sanskaras of the Muslim artists, the great artists of the non-existent, but we know that, the rest of the world doesn't, the progressive art movement, Souza, Raza, Kayumeta, Hussein, they were able to get on to the abstract movement very fast because they knew from their sanskara how to break form. The, there's no other way, word for it. The Hindu artists didn't. They do not break form. They immerse it and they let it, you know, get submerged or swim away, but they don't break consciously form. And it is when you go against your sanskaras and when you are a simple copycat, which is the story of uh, the contemporary visual arts scene of India for a very long time and in a very major way in the last century and now, that is when trouble begins. I would like uh, to ask Shakti to kindly add his thoughts to ours and give us his views. Uh, <clears throat> these are very tough acts to follow. Um, and I'm going to try and bring a slightly different uh, set of issues uh, to the table because both Shok and uh, Jotin and Shanta as well have talked about a range of issues that have plagued Indian art or they perhaps are developments uh, that are taking place. And I don't really think the issue, for example, of uh, oh. <laughs> um, <clears throat> whether we're using technology or are not using technology, whether that is as important an issue as what is the place and the role of art in our society. My sense is how you make the art is not that important, but where is art in our society? And as far as the artists are concerned, they are playing a certain role as producers of art within the context of the role that art has in this society. And this society is not just Indian society, which is of course changing, it is part of a global society. Now, where are the artists? I mean, um, the artists, I think, are somewhat frustrated. Um, I think artists are generally in denial as well, because there's a notion that we are doing something that is deep and relevant and important, but the society in which we are doing it and where it is at uh, is largely not interested in the arts. So, where are the artists? The artists. Uh, perhaps, you know, uh, uh, this sort of lost tribe that rant and try and, and struggle. But I think we need to understand the place of art in society itself. And I had a choice of, you know, taking, picking up on Ashok's natural, ebullient optimism. He always is very optimistic about things. And Jotin's bitter darkness, you know, that things that are really shit, if they're things that are really bad. Dark chocolates. Dark chocolates. Dark chocolates, nice. <laughs> and I think that one has to consider a few things. One, what is the role of the arts today? And I think we have to understand that 
to a large extent, the answer become an investment. <coughs> the existence of art is supported by people who want to invest the monies that they have, and they have, I mean, we are very sort of unequal. The, what's happened to the world is great inequality. There's some people with lots of money and they don't know what to do with it. And art has become a thing that they invest their extra money in. And what their interest is, and I'm sure Jotham has seen this, I have seen it, that when there is a, the question about the work that one does, people are interested in, you know, what kind of appreciation is likely to happen. Is this a good investment? One hears so much of this. So, um, what are artists doing? Where are artists? I think they're, by and large, they're making investment products. We are part of the financial industry as opposed to being part of the creative social industry. So that's one point I wanted to make. The other which is sort of related, and it's a, it's a strange thing that art is a, a show-off product. People collect art or want to collect art so that they can show that they have become rich. And in societies where there is a strong nourish kind of cultural impetus, you find this. And what people want is recognizable status symbols. So where is art? What is the role of art in society? It is to provide status symbols for the rich. They're not really interested in the quality of the art whether it's digitally made or digitally uh, uh, derived or not derived is not a question. We have some well-known artists who are, who weren't using uh, digital technologies but are using them today, but nobody is really concerned about that. They really want to have one of, or two, preferably, of this great name. So that's the second thing that's happening with the arts, is that we, uh, our, but we provide show off status products for uh, a society that is, you know, everybody wants to develop, we want to become economically richer, better. The role of art in societies like this is this kind of thing. Now, is this all? And obviously not. I mean, there is, there is another very important role for the arts. And I'll, I'll talk about two of them. Uh, Jotun has touched on one of them. The one that he hasn't touched about, in which we sort of uh, somewhere um, take for granted, perhaps, is that there's a role for art to help individuals and societies to know themselves, to see themselves. And it's a very important role. Whether you're a poet, or a painter, or a dancer, or a, a theatre person, or a photographer, it doesn't matter. The, the artist is a person who can bring <coughs> something to us, so that we can see ourselves. Now, I would love to talk about this at great length, because it's a very interesting, very important thing. Both from the point of view of the making of art, as well as the interacting with the art. But we don't have the time for that. I just want to share one lovely story on this that happened to me. And it's happened several times. But this is one that comes to my mind today. Many years ago in Bombay, I had a show. And at that time, the Taj Art Gallery, uh, those of you who are familiar with Bombay, was this little gallery where there weren't too many galleries. This is one that showed some uh, interesting art. And you got this for a week, and you usually, as an artist, sat there and watched the people who came. And about the middle of that week, there was two women who came in. And I was sitting watching, and they, the two of them sort of walked very close to each other. And they went slowly, slowly through the whole exhibition. Took a long period of time, I was fascinated. 
And as artists, you know, you wonder whether this is a prospective buyer or something. You know, should you go up and sort of say hello? You know, <laughs> did you like something? What did you like? But in this particular, and usually one doesn't know how to do this, so they went to it. That evening, one of the two women, who was the Indian woman, came back to the gallery and she said, uh, you're the artist and that lady who came is a very dear friend of mine. And something very important happened today. And she told me the story about this friend of hers who was a German lady who had come to India and had married very late in her life. And, was ex and had mad this was her first posting with her husband. She was perhaps in her forties. And very happy. And then suddenly her husband died. And she was crushed. And she was trying to get out of Bombay because she had lots of negative memories. She just wanted to leave. And this Indian friend this of her said to me, that day, she told me, after we'd seen the exhibition, she said, Tara, that was the Indian woman's name, Tara, today, I have seen hope again. And there was one painting that she wanted to buy, but she was leaving early. And she said, can you give this to her? Normally, you don't take paintings down. So this painting that had shown her hope, so art can do this, and it's, this is, uh, a role that is uh, a part of what uh, exists for us. Now, the second, um, and it's puzzling, I think, the, this very forum, and all of you that have come here, and what the Pine and Legends are trying to do, what the ICC has attempted to do, is somehow to look at the role of art as something that builds community. Now, one of the frustrations that I have felt as an artist is that one feels, wherever one is, without a sense of community. Now, whether one is, needs community art centers or... We need to be thinking about some way in which the value generation and the creative exercises in the arts come together at a community level and that they should be, you know, I mean, Delhi could have so many community centers for the arts. So they have community centers, <coughs> there are no arts. <coughs> marriage halls. Marriage halls. Yeah, marriage halls. So I think that's sort of what I wanted to add to um, what has been said. Um, that there is a crisis uh, in the arts. But one doesn't have to be pessimistic about it. But to do something about it is a puzzle. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, when I was 
to think of during in ICCR I used culture as a means of developing communities and developing communications. Whether I could do it successfully or not is not for me to say, but I did try that. But to develop a policy for culture is a much broader canvas area. And I wouldn't even dare really get into this area. It requires involvement of everyone. But do you want to say something? Yeah, no, go ahead. I want to say something about culture policy. Yeah, okay. uh, but what I do want to say really is, and I, if I'm if I'm permitted to really start the, the reactions or the responses from the audience with my this remark really, is this. I think we have a lot of confusion here amongst ourselves as to what art really means. We look at a picture, we look at a painting, we look at something and say, ah, beautiful. We don't even understand what the beauty really means there. We simply say it's beautiful without understanding whether it is art or it is war or we don't even understand, frankly speaking, whether art is relating to a performance, it's visual art or what it is. Now, what I feel personally is that art what we see, whether it is on stage or we see it in architecture, look at the lines in this hall here. And this angry young man, while coming down the stairs, he was looking at the stairs created by Joseph Steen and said, Can you see something wrong with the stairs? I thought what he meant, to, no, I, I don't think anything. Uh, now, I thought that basically the stairs are there, but I couldn't say it really because that is not part of art really. And from that in, I was expecting a comment really more relating to artistic part of it rather than the technical part of it. Now that is what I mean really. I think for far too long, we have created a separation between art as we call it art and technology as we call technology. I don't think that they are separate. It is simply the means of expression Everybody had a different way of expressing his aesthetic thought. And everybody has those aesthetic <coughs> ideas in the mind. James Watt, when he created the steam engine, he was a considered this would be a thing of beauty, really. You might think it is hideous, but for him, it was something which he created through his own efforts, and it was something which he had not created. Uh, so I think, first of all, we have to consider art not simply as what we see on the canvas or on the stage, but art as the thought behind the aesthetic idea behind what is created for people to see. And that is where Shakti, your idea of the interaction and what actually is created comes in. The way of interaction would differ from people to people. But what is created would depend upon the creator really. Uh, <coughs> I'm, I'm there is no visualization. And create a thing of beauty out of that really is, a, is an artistic thought. And we combine that artistic thought with scientific calculations to create something which is tangible. Maxwell, I can give numerous examples where uh, the science was not simply a matter of calculation, but Einstein. It was a matter of really symmetry, to create symmetry in what we see around there. But anyway, getting away from technology and art, what is the problem today? The problem. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, Mr. Mr. Before you go, can I just intervene for a second? Yes, yes. Just to say, there's nothing like science and art. They're inseparable. Not like both sides of a coin. They're like coffee and sugar. Absolutely. So when you say I'm a science graduate and this is art, when I talked about the steps, I'm talking of the rhythm of the step. Absolutely. When you walk, it was narrow. Your foot was not held in. So I'm talking of the rhythm. When I'm talking of the temple, the rhythm, the talam. So I'm not talking of science and art as separate. Uh, 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 Rad, Radha Krishnan, the son of uh, uh, C. V. Raman, the great scientist who died four years ago, came and gave a lecture at my art center in Bhubaneswar, the inseparable relationship between art and science. Yes. There, nothing, there cannot be any science without art, there cannot be art without science. But our understanding of our colonial education of science and art, the child should do science and this should do art. There cannot be mathematics without art. So there is art and science that are inseparable, still prevailing in our country in the division. No, I completely agree with you. This is what my, my thought is. 
Now, the one basic problem, I think, if you look at the way arts flourished in India, and I'm talking about basically the times when Quran uh, was created, when you had and they were all public arts. They were public spaces, even if they were created by the emperors. But they were temples. They were public spaces. They were not individuals. There is no single individual artist who you can name who created those arts. And